Hi, this is Jim Elringer. Welcome to today's lecture on fungi. Fungi are those weird organisms. They're diverse and distinct from both plants and animals. They're distinct in body form, growth, and their unusual mode of nutrition. As it turns out, these characteristics are also key adaptations that have very broad ecological significance. This lecture is divided into six parts. In the first part, we'll talk about the evolution of fungi. If we look at a phylogenetic tree, we'll see that fungi are very closely related to animals. They share a very, they share a common uh, ancestor at the point shown with the circle. You might ask yourself then, what distinguishes a fungus from an animal? And it has to do with their modes of nutrition. Fungi, as you will learn, have an external digestion system, whereas animals have internal digestion systems. If we look at this overview of the phylogeny of fungi, one of the things that we'll find is that they all have cell walls that distinguishes them from animals and that there is chitin in those cell walls. Chitin is the polymer which is used to make the cell wall. A derived feature within fungi is a life form known as hyphae. Hyphae are long cylindrical tubes, as you will see, that have multiple nuclei. Further derived characteristics appear in the form of septa, so that in the Basidiomycetes and the Ascomycetes, we find septa separating nuclei into different components or compartments within the hyphae. The septa, as it turns out, uh, is uh, is present only in the more derived of the fungi. Lastly, we can separate the Basidiomycetes and Ascomycetes by the nature of the fruiting bodies. In Basidiomycetes, the spores are produced externally on the fruiting body. In Ascomycetes, the spores are produced internally on the fruiting body. We also have fun facts that you may want to know about different groups of fungi. The chytrids turn out to be the aquatic fungi, common in many lake and river systems. The molds that we see on bread and other foods that are left in the kitchen for far too long belong largely to the zygomycetes group. The glomeromycetes are most commonly known as arbuscular mycorrhizae and plant roots. As you'll learn, these are symbiotic relationships between a plant and the fungus for the purpose of acquiring nutrients. The basidiomycetes are best known for their capacity to decay wood. And as it turns out, vesicular mycorrhizae, another form of mycorrhiza, uh, also appear within the Basidiomycetes. Lastly, the Ascomycetes turn out to be key fungal symbionts in a life form known as lichens. Turns out also that many of the uh, fungi that we eat in everyday diets are also part of the Ascomycetes. And of course, it turns out that the antibiotics that are so important to human health such as penicillin and amoxicillin, come from groups within the Ascomycetes. As I had mentioned earlier, a distinguishing morphological feature of fungi is the presence of hyphae. Hyphae are long, straw-like structures capped at each end and containing multiple nuclei. In the more derived forms of fungi, 
The hyphae have a, a very different appearance. They have septa or small walls that isolate nuclei into different compartments with pores that allow the free flow of cytoplasmic materials from one compartment to the next. <clears throat> it turns out that both fungi and some animals contain chitin. So for instance, arthropod exoskeletons and the beaks of squids and octopuses are made of chitin. Thus chitin is not a distinguishing feature between fungi and animals. It's the presence of the cell wall that is a distinguishing feature. So chitin is a more ancestral feature. Chitin is a polymer, that it is a long chain, repeated chain of the same molecule, and that is, it is a polymer of N-acetylglucosamine, which it turns out, which turns out to be a nitrogen-containing polysaccharide. At this point, let's stop the video to test your understanding of what I just lectured on. Here are three true-false questions for you to answer. After you've written down your answer, then please restart the video to learn your answers. The first statement is true. Chitin is to fungi as cellulose is to plants. Yes, both are associated components with cell walls. Chitin is found in fungi and cellulose is found in plants. The second question, the second statement is false. Not all fungi have hyphae. Chytrids, as was mentioned earlier, do not have hyphae, and you will soon learn that yeast also do not have hyphae. Third question, derived fungal taxa, such as the Basidiomycetes and Ascomycetes, have septa isolating the nuclei. That is correct. This ends part one.